All right, Jamaica, Jamaica. So uh, let me preface this uh, recording by saying, look, if it is that you're going to come and display your public ignorance hiding behind the curtain of the Internet and thinking that it is a disrespect to me, please uh, spare us and spare myself uh, the idea of laughing at your ignorance publicly. Because the last time I posted a video about some football related matters, people just come on and their contribution was Basok Yamada, Yabati Man. Uh, are we a man like you know that kind of public display of stupidity that you don't have the intellectual capacity to have a civil discourse so if that's your contribution don't bother watch a video normally when i post a video i don't ask people to agree with my positions i just ask you to discuss the issues all right and so we're going to talk some jamaican football so since Leon Bailey uh, publicly challenged the, the leadership of the Jamaica Football Federation and maybe the entire administration to be good leaders and be the best that they can, of course the Federation has fallen under the spotlight more so. And I'm hoping that they're taking the time out to learn from that. I certainly never had a problem with the criticisms that Leon Bailey laid at the feet of the JFF because if you trace them, um, they can be found they they can be traced to a factual conclusion i just had a problem with the medium he chose to uh, voice his grouses and and that remains but i digress so the question is if it is that we are going to say get rid of this current jff administration and let's just say we're narrowing it down to the president and the general secretary because they are the faces of the administration right now and they're the ones calling the shots In order to do that, there has to be a motion of no confidence from somebody. And who's the one cat, um, rat that is going to try and bail the cat? Because elections are not constitutionally due until the next two to three years, which means that they are the ones res responsible and have the responsibility to take us through this World Cup cycle. Right? And let's just say somebody is brave enough to come forward and move that motion of no confidence to sow that seed of chaos as I would think right now. Who are the ones that you're going to nominate to run the Federation? Will it be Ambassador Stuart Stevenson who ran for and was defeated at the polls of president? And does he still want it? Does, is he still interested in, in leadership? Would it be Rudolph Speed who is now a current, current member of the Jamaica Football Federation and I think is a fairly good football brain? Does he want it and is there a pathway to him becoming the, the the president and maybe the general or maybe the general secretary do we go for Orville powell who is on the outside and always seemingly uh, screaming his good ideas at those on the corridors of power but they have fallen in deaf ears do we go for michael hall and can he become the president if there's a, an emergency agm i don't think so i don't think the fifa statutes allow for that because he's not a member of any uh, paris associations and so we might have to look at deconstructing the, the old system that gives way to, to elevating maybe the worst possible candidates that are there to run Jamaica's football. Because maybe the best people, as I said, are not in the court, on, on the corridors of football. And let's just say um, we unravel the cart and flip the boat over. Who are going to act as the life vests to save us right now. We have to think about that. Maybe, is it then that we could we look at a, a collective approach from the, the football community in Jamaica and by extension the Caribbean. And I, and I say the Caribbean because Horace Reed works predominantly outside of Jamaica. His work is in CONCACAF and by extension the region, right? So do we turn to him and maybe a Howard McIntosh and a, a Andre War and a, a Raymond Grant as a shadow administration to help guide the process because if we were to get to the world cup in the end it doesn't matter who uh, who are the faces of it we would have all won in the end because truth be told michael ricketts and uh, dalton wind are deficient even though they are well intentioned they are deficient leaders and they're pretty much learning on the job especially michael uh, uh, um, dalton wind Michael Ricketts has no excuses because he has been there since he was um, a boy. Right? 
But a lot of the people on the corridors of power in football have long been there. So why are we to expect any different when only the leader has changed? When it's the same people behind the card pushing it. Captain Horace Burrell was there. We failed to get back to the promised land post-1998. And I think that was down to a lack of proper planning on the part of the uh, respective administrations. Whether it be Princeton Boxhill or Captain Horace Burrell. But they gave their bit. And it is only right that people in this moment of anxiety when you don't think that things are on the right path you you call for change but in calling for change we have to be a, we have to view things uh, through a little bit more constructive lens and not just willing to tear down everything not knowing where we will go from there i know negotiations are happening now and maybe that is why we need level heads in mr reed and raymond grant who could come back in and help the process to negotiate so we can not have players threatening to lay down uh, tools 24 hours, 48 hours before games. We're going into the campaign and we're still negotiating and wondering what's going to happen. And, and for those who might have a very sh short memory, selectively, remember that happened too under Captain Horace Burrell. So we have been here before. A lot of these poor leadership traits that we now see manifesting itself in Mr. Ricketts and his administration they have been a long they have been long standing issues that have plagued Jamaica's football i hope that they are now negotiating thinking of the financial fallouts up ahead because even under captain Horace Burrell and in better times when there were no uh, coronavirus crippling the world's economy corporate sponsors were were jff shy they were still not coming in, even when Captain was there trying to woo them. And he had his charm about him. These two, not so sure. I see where they've hired a, a new marketing man to come in and try and see if they can uh, hit the hand back of some of the corporate sponsors to drop some shillings in the bucket. Because the JFF is now 300, near $300 million in the red, 200 and something million dollars in the red. And they're still owing uh, some of that money is owed to players since the, the Nations League. And they're still trying to figure their way around that. And we hope, we hope that Leon Bailey's words don't come to pass where the JFF becomes the only reason that stood in the way or the only hindrance that stopped us from getting to the World Cup. Mr. Mr. Ricketts and, and Dalton went. If you need help, hold your hand up. Call out to somebody who has been there, done that on this corridor. I, I listed some names. Howard McIntosh, Harris Reed. Call up on Andre Waugh. Even call your friend Jack Warner, because he's a friend of the Caribbean always. And is always an ears to those who need him in the, in the region. But we have to try and do something to make sure that we're on the best possible footing to get to the, to the World Cup. As I mentioned, negotiations are happening now with the reggae boys. Um, I know that other sporting entities are doing the same thing, planning for when the real impact of COVID-19 is felt. The West Indies Cricket Board and the West Indies Players Association are now renegotiating contracts um, to give and take somewhere in there because revenues are going to be in short supplies. It's not going to be in the same kind of abundance that it was um, pre-COVID and so as leaders you have to be proactive in that regard what is the JFF doing I know that they uh, were supposed to reach out to the Minister of Sport to, to try and uh, get er, get in early to see what they can get from the, the government that letter had still not been sent out prior to me recording this video I don't know if it has since been sent off while I am and these are some of the reasons why the JFF might need to call upon people like Raymond Grant. He's been there, done that, you know, a, a, a stable hand to help certain processes. Because if collectively we are able to get to the World Cup, we would have all won in the end. 
like chronic said in one of his songs much more than the worker the work is greater so if it is that people can help from behind the scenes and make sure that we get to the world cup there's the spin-offs will be great and everybody will benefit in the end no matter who is taking the credit but i think from uh, skill set level in terms of players human resources we have what it takes to get to the world cup there are some who are now questioning tapas tech technical analysis as to whether he has the capabilities to to navigate the waters for us i i don't have those concerns because i think tapa if given the, the proper tools to work with will be able to get us to the world cup um concacaf will be releasing the format very soon of course victor montagliani is making sure uh that um his people have a chance canada to get to the world cup but if it is that we're drawn in a group with say usa costa rica tough I, I, based on our rankings i hope we don't find ourselves with costa rica and usa and or mexico in our group i don't think us mexico usa will end up in one group but just say for instance the god is ungrateful to us and that happens we'd be in trouble but i don't think that will happen but should we draw ourselves with usa um canada say for instance trinidad and tobago we should be able to navigate that group easier said than done and that's why the planning must be good but if it is that we flip the boat over right now who are the ones who are going to act as the life vests to save us if we sow seed of chaos now and get rid of this jff administration who takes up the baton and run with it so when we criticize we have to do so in context and remember a lot of the people who are now in the corridors of power as i said before were there under the previous administrations and so nothing really has changed behind the scenes only the face of the federation has changed so why is the expectation much more on the shoulders of these two than in previous years of course we have to hold our leaders to the highest standard and it is incumbent on mr ricketts and D dalton wind if it is that you can't manage then step aside now another man want to take over now it would be within the football community to identify that somebody and we united we get united behind that person and um and push the thing forward become unite for that cause we unite we unite ourselves and 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 make it happen but i sincerely hope i hope that we don't have to be cheering for our respective other teams other favorite teams i.e argentina brazil spain england whatever but we are cheering on the black green and gold in qatar is a lot of work to be done but it can be done all right